Hello there. This is Arthur Hill, Chief Technical Strategist at TrendInvestorPro.com. You are tuned in to Next Level Charting. Thank you very much for joining us. So today we're going to take a turn to the intermarket arena. We'll look at TLT as it breaks down a little bit further. It is lagging the inflation index bond ETF. And then we're going to turn to the commodities and a few commodities ETFs, precious metals, base metals, agriculture, and of course, energy. So we're going to start off with the Treasury bond ETF, TLT. And we can see that there was this big run up in January and February. And then we got the chaos in March. And basically, since March, since April, actually, TLT has pretty much been flat. It's gone nowhere. And we've seen a downswing, an upswing, and we're currently in a downswing. And this downswing here has broken the 200-day moving average. So I think TLT is basically flat, if you will. And I would give it a bearish bias because this is the immediate trend here that is down. But we have a clear resistance level there with that high that was put in. And yeah, maybe it's a falling wedge, but it's within a flatter trading range. So we need to get a break above, say, 164 to reverse that downtrend in TLT. So if TLT is moving lower, that, of course, means interest rates are moving higher since uh, the early part of August. And you wonder why is that happening? And one reason might be is that inflationary expectations are picking up. Because if there's one thing that bonds loathe, it is inflation. And if you look at the inflation index bond ETF, TIP, you can see it's holding up much better than TLT, whereas TLT moved down during this period, down to its 200-day. TIP has basically been flat and holding up much better. There you can see a TLT in that second window. And then in this lower window, we got the TIP TLT ratio. And that shows the relative performance of the two. So when TIP outperforms, this ratio rises. And when TLT TIP underperforms, this ratio falls. And we can see overall it has been rising since May. And so that tells you that investors, at least bond investors, are preferring the inflation indexed bond over the normal bond. And that would seem to suggest that there are some whiffs of inflation in the air. Now, another thing I'm looking at is the junk bond ETF. And the reason I'm looking at that is because it is more tied to the stock market. Junk bonds are more sensitive to economic fluctuations because junk bonds, of course, are the lowest ratings on the credit curve, if you will. And so if there are defaults going to happen, it's going to happen at the junk end of the market. And so it's kind of a barometer for the stock market as long as junk bonds are doing okay. The stock market is doing okay. Well, SPY is hitting new highs or did hit new highs. But if you look at the equal weight S&P 500 here, it is yet to hit a new high. And it looks more like this junk bond ETF, which is also, also has yet to hit a new high. So I would still say the cup is half full for the junk bond ETF. Because, you know, you got above the 200-day, you kind of had this corrective pattern here and this breakout. Not very strong, but, you know, it's not, it hasn't broken down. So the cup is half full as long as we hold this support level here. But if we break down there, that's going to be a negative for junk bonds. And that would be a negative for stocks. Now, since we're on RSP and stocks, looking at the broader market, uh, the cup is half full here as well. Now we can see a kind of a consolidation here. It's not really a, an ascending triangle, a robust ascending triangle, triangle because these are kind of rising highs. But, you know, you did have this big advance. You have this consolidation, mostly above the 200-day. And if we get a breakout there, that is going to be bullish for the stock market. And if you hone in on this last part here, you can see that was that market leading rise. And then it's kind of like a little pennant or flag forming. And again, a breakout there would be bullish for the broader market.
So when you think about inflation, what's the next thing you usually think about? Well, it would be commodity prices, rising commodity prices. And so I was looking at the commodity charts and I picked out some Deutsche Bank commodity ETFs that track the major commodity groups, energy, agriculture, base metals, and precious metals. And you can see here, there are the weightings for these. This is the DBC commodity ETF. And there you can see those four groups there. And it adds up to more than 100%, but I don't know exactly why that is. You, this source comes from Invesco.com, the fund family. But there we can see that big advance in the commodity ETF and this decline that formed like a falling wedge, and we broke out there. And that breakout is largely holding. We're kind of consolidating above the breakout zone. But as long as you're holding above 13 I think that breakout is bullish, and that suggests that higher commodity prices in the coming weeks are in the offing. Now, oil or energy is a big part of that commodity ETF I just showed you, like 45%. And so here is oil, and oil took a hit today, down over 3%. I'm recording this on Wednesday. You'll be seeing it on Thursday. Uh, but there you can see that same kind of pattern, a big move up, uh, pull back kind of like a rising, falling wedge, and a breakout working. And now we're testing that breakout zone. So oil is looking a bit iffy here. And if it breaks down back below there, that would be a negative for oil. And that is USO I'm looking at. Can use USO for short-term analysis. And here is the energy fund. And there you can see the makeup of the energy fund. Gasoline and crude oil around 25%, Brent 23%, diesel and natural gas. And it's got a similar pattern here. It's below the falling 200-day, had this little wedge and the wedge breakout, but the wedge breakout is being tested right now as we speak. And if it doesn't hold, that would be bearish. And one thing I did notice is if you look at RSI, it's getting resistance in that 50 to 60 zone. And that's typically where momentum does meet resistance. Because you see, we got oversold here in early September, and we couldn't get above this resistance zone. So that's kind of like the next test to watch for. If RSI can break above 60, and we can get above 10 for this energy ETF, DBE. Now, precious metals are quite interesting. And first, I'm going to do the precious metals fund, DBP. And we can see here that this is 78% gold and 22% silver. And I find this a very appealing mix because silver, it's not called the widow maker. Natural gas is called the widow maker of the futures contracts because plenty of people have gone broke trading natural gas. Uh, silver's right behind it. A lot of wild swings in silver. It's kind of like gold on steroids and Red Bull combined. Uh, but it's not bad to have a little bit of silver, and that's kind of what this precious metals fund does. You get mostly gold, but you get a little bit of silver there for the high octane. And if you look at this chart here, it looks like a bullish chart. You know, you got this huge advance, and then we got a correction. And this correction retraced a little over 38% of that prior advance. So that's like two steps forward and, and less than one step backward. And it's okay to have a step backward. And it looks like we're breaking out to continue higher. And so uh, this looks like a bullish setup for precious metals. And if we look at the individual components, we've got GLD here. And it's got a breakout working. Again, it's got a surge, consolidation, surge, and then a correction. And so this is a correction within an uptrend. We're well above the rising 200-day. And so if it's a correction within an uptrend, we expect a breakout and a resumption of that uptrend at some point. And it looks like that is happening. We got that first breakout there with the move above the upper line. Fell back, but we did hold this low here, and now we're turning up again. So that kind of reinforces support. And if you close below these lows, then you have to reevaluate. 
But I think right now there is a breakout here in GLD, and that is bullish. And then if we look at silver, you know, I really don't have a clean pattern here for silver. You know, it's got this huge advance. And then along the way, you had a couple of little corrections. And it looked like we were triangulating here for a move higher, but instead drop lower. So I can't draw a nice, you know, wedge or channel or flag because the trend lines don't match up. But you know, basically this decline is a correction still within a bigger uptrend because you're above the rising 200-day. And so we got this little lift off here, a successful test, and a bounce. And so as long as we hold above 22, I think the cup is half full for silver, and that would help that precious metals ETF. But if you notice on all of these, I've given you a short-term level to watch going forward on when you would want to reevaluate this scenario, this bullish scenario. One final mention is, you know, you're not going to get much diversification between silver and gold. Here's the correlation between silver and gold. And you can see it's all positive except for a brief moment there in January 2000. Uh, but it's been very strong in July, August, September, and October. So they move in the same direction, basically. So what's going on over at TrendInvestorPro.com? Well, I put out an article on Tuesday covering exit strategies. In fact, I covered four different ones, waiting for a trend reversal, a chandelier exit, parabolic SAR, and my favorite, the ATR trailing stop. And I've got chart examples that explain how these work, the benefits and drawbacks of each one, and why I like this ATR trailing stop the most. So that's available for subscribers to TrendInvestorPro.com. Next up, we have Base Metals ETF. And there you can see three big holdings, copper, zinc, and aluminum. And huge run up there. And broke above that January high and then had a pullback and got the breakout again and hit a new high. You know, it's extended a bit after this move from 14.6 to 16. And that's like a 10% move. But it's clearly a pullback and a successful breakout. So base metals are looking bullish. And then if you look at copper here, you can see it's one of the reasons for strength in base metals. We've got the continuous contract for copper. And you can see that it is breaking out to a new high. And then we get to agriculture, and this is a pretty varied ETF. There you can see wheat and soybeans, sugar and cattle, about equal 13 to 15%. You got corn, cocoa, coffee. We got hogs and cotton, so it's covering quite a bit there. But we can also see a bullish pattern developing in agriculture. You had this double bottom and then the breakout. And so after this big surge here, we've consolidated. And a consolidation after a big advance is considered a bullish continuation pattern. And I would expect a breakout here and a continuation higher. All right, so that concludes this edition of Next Level Charting. Thank you very much for joining us. Check out TrendInvestorPro.com if you'd like to know more. Or you can follow me on Twitter at Arthur Hill. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.